I mean, as I said, I've made a return to, to painting and it's, and it's really made me evaluate what I can, what I can make within, within my home. I mean, I, I haven't had a studio since I left uh, my MA. Um, so I've, I've been making a lot of video works. I've made some sound works. I've made a lot of works in print, but I have painting is something I've sort of stayed away from, but I, I through uh, the extra time that I was afforded to kind of read and, you know, the, the reason I ended up painting t uh, sections of Titian paintings was because I had this massive Titian book that had been sat on my shelf for months and I just never got around to reading it and I just thought, oh, I'll read that. And then I started, I, there's this one painting in there, the Pizarro altarpiece, which has these two beautiful pillars that are sort of meant to ascend to heaven. And then there's this strip in the middle, um, this the, the perspective. And a lot of my works deal with sort of dualisms and two two works working together in these columns really hit home with me and they so yeah, that enabled me to sort of consider this whole other history of you know of, of art in, in relation to the more contemporary works I, I have been making and to sort of reflect back on my painting practice and I found a way to sort of scale down you know I used to make very large uh, paintings but now they're, they're sort of tabletop size and trying to find new ways to make works you know I've, I've you know bought new tools I've, I've had large pieces of MDF delivered to my back garden and I've realized the potential of the space that I, I live in so it, that has been a real really liberating um, time time period this, in this residency so to make those works and and know that I can make large scale works to send out to other places um, from home. Got a lot of different ideas. I mean, I mean, at the moment, they they sort of stand silent. They you know they they hang on the walls. These silent sort of windows into you know um, landscape. And but what I'd really like them to do is reflect back onto the viewer. So they you know a lot of my works they're silent and and that causes that kind of sense of reflection for the viewer. But I'm really interested in in using sounds, which is something I've been doing with the Wilson Art Collective. Um, group and we've been exploring sound through workshops and through zoom um, to make ourselves more aware of our environment and our behavior through the noises we make so i've been also been talking to an artist called lee chaos who ollie um kindly introduced me to and i'm starting to think about how i can i don't want to give too much away but i want to use like headphones and sort of more kind of personal intimate experiences using sounds from the gallery to play back to the viewer by using uh, delay pedals, so, so like tape delay pedals. And so it would become quite a much more sort of technological experience, but having this focal point of the painting. So it's, it's going to be quite an experimental installation, I think, um, with the paintings being the starting point, but they could also end up just falling silent. So, it, you know, it's whether I go with sound or, or silence, that's kind of a decision that I'm, I'm yet to be able to make, but I'm very excited to get into. The works I, I, I'm, I'm hoping to display and I'm, I've been making, they, they strive to sort of encourage the viewer to have this kind of reflection on, on themselves and to consider their own kind of behaviours in, in the gallery space. And that has a lot to do with um, my practice in terms of, um, I've, I've been using uh, cognitive behavioural therapy in my, in my personal life and managing my own anxiety and mental health and exhibitions I've had recently have, have dealt a lot with my kind of coping strategies um, to, to help manage my anxiety and my mental health. And that often involves um, replaying and uh, writing down or reenacting my behaviours to sort of work out what what's causing me to feel a certain way and where I can interject and a lot that involves a lot of repetition and repetition is something that's very much involved in my in my video works um these sort of characters that kind of repeat a gesture over and over again in this sort of state of waiting and these sort of sense uh, states of tension um uh, when nothing's really happening and that's kind of what these paintings are they're kind of these sort of frozen moments in time where I think it's momentarily still but they're also installed in, in spaces where they're kind of transient and they're, you know, in, in between places, which this kind of digital residency is a little bit like that. You know, it, it's, it's been, all the work's been made in a lockdown in, in, a, in a period in between normal life and what, whatever is coming next and, and between the making of the work and the, and the, the final show. So 
it kind of yeah, and yeah I think the digital residency goes more into the sort of unraveling and trying to um explain and examine what what it is I'm doing and that's a really important part of the CBT process that I go through personally because it's trying to work out what the mechanics of what's going on before you kind of make some sort of breakthrough I suppose so yeah it's just another part in that little that little system that I've got going on between the initial feeling w working it out and displaying it and then in that in that point of display there's that's often that point of reflection which is something that I'm, I'm yet to get to with this work but with the other works it definitely fits into that model and it's and it's really helped me frame a lot of my other works because I've had that time to come away and and do the research into into what my other works have been about and the artists and making all those links.